Welcome back to HodgePodge. Today I have another unboxing and product review video for you today. I've been researching manual lenses and I have come across these lenses that are CCTV lenses. They're very cheap because they're actually lenses for security cameras and these are either overstock items or used lenses that haven't been used for very long that were once used on security cameras or would be used on security cameras and uh, they have this really neat character about them uh, particularly the 24 and the 50 millimeter that I have um, they're known for their kind of swirling bokeh which um, is very similar to the swirling bokeh you might find on the Helios 50 millimeter, which is a cold following. The Helios is a Russian built lens, which um, was built to uh, basically mimic the look of um, a more popular, more expensive Zeiss lens. Now the Helios um, is well known for the swirl, and when I found out that the CCTV lens also has this same swirl for uh, a fraction of the cost. I figured I'd try that as well. As if the Helios wasn't cheap enough already, I think the most expensive one I've seen is maybe uh, $60, $80, and the cheapest I've seen is maybe $20. So we have the um, uh, 8mm uh, CCTV lens, so super wide angle for uh, urban scapes and such. And then we have a 25 millimeter, which has the adapter on there. This is made by Pixico, uh, the lens and adapter. And here we have um, Sane Sonic 50 millimeter, which is a 1.4. And um, so the 50 and the 25 are most well known for the swirling effect. And the 8 millimeter I just bought because um, I really need a wide angle and I, I'm not ready to drop a ton of money on a wide angle. Now, one great thing about these lenses is that they are all manual, and I am looking into um, sometime in the future purchasing a manual lens or a cine lens, and these will do that for you. That If you're a novice or a beginner like myself, and you're looking to um, get into uh, manual focus pulling, and uh, you need an inexpensive start, uh, I would I would definitely encourage you to go with a CCTV lens. Now, a lot of the research I have done on lenses uh, really brings me to the conclusion that a lens is all about the character. The characteristics and qualities of your lenses will bring an extra layer to your aesthetic choices with your productions. And uh, I'm really looking to um, to play around with that swirling bokeh effect. And the good thing is these all can be adapted to the Sony E-mount. Uh, I have here the A6300, um, and I'm really looking forward to using these, uh, trying these out. So um, make sure on your camera when you put on the adapter, because these are manual lenses, make sure you put it into uh, manual focus uh, so you don't burn up the electronics with inside your camera. And um, so here we go. So right now I'm about two feet minimum focus distance uh, is what I would say to my night blooming Sirius plant here. And I'm currently shooting at 6400 ISO. Doing a little sample video here and I'll do a little focus pull for you. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments section below.
I hope you liked the mini horror flick I created there. It seemed appropriate given the sample footage I took. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the Pixico 25mm f1.4 CCTV lens for the C-mount camera. Plus the C-mount movie lens to Sony E-mount NEX camera lens adapter. The link I have provided in the video description is the exact lens I bought and the benefit of purchasing this listing is that with the lens you are getting the C2 Sony E-mount adapter. Normally this adapter would cost $5 to $10 on its own, so when you factor in the price of the mount, this comes out to be only a $10 to $15 lens. I don't think I can express in words how happy I am that I bought this lens and you'll see why in just a second. If you're looking for a fun lens with a lot of character, and moreover a sharp lens to add to your collection, then I would say look no further than this lens. I was more than impressed with its performance on my Sony a6300, and here is some sample footage to prove its ability. Take a look at this clip in full 4K. Now the Sony a6300 actually films in 6K and then downscales the image to 4K, which will provide you with an 8K equivalent image and just look at the color and the sharpness of this image. I believe at the time I was filming with the lens wide open and I was just astonished at how sharp this turned out. One reason for this, and really the reason for this, is that the CCTV lens is a security camera lens. Now think about that. This lens once belonged to a camera that's job was to be as sharp as possible. Outdated and no longer needed, these lenses are plentiful and available at low costs. I highly recommend you try this lens out. Now, if you're sold, there are a few things to keep in mind. The first thing is that, yes, these lenses will need to be adapted. What this also means is that the focal length will change. I think this 25 ended up looking more like a 35 or even a 50 millimeter. When not shooting wide open, you will have to significantly crop the image, which is why I would recommend only using this lens wide open or nearly wide open, unless you like that look and decide to leave it as a stylistic choice. You might be able to avoid this with an extension ring, which I will also link in the video description below. I've not tried this method, but keep in mind an extension ring will also affect the focal length of the lens. If your camera has the megapixels needed to crop the image, then you might consider stopping down the lens for added sharpness. The other thing to keep in mind is that the lens does have some distortion, which could be an interesting effect, but can also be taken out easily in your video editing software. I use Premiere Pro and will show you how to get rid of the warp before the end of this video. The final thing to keep in mind is that the lens has this neat swirling bokeh effect, which is as desirable as it is unwanted. It's almost like a cheap anamorphic look, but what you may find with this lens is that your subject needs to remain centered. There were a few times where towards the edge of the image my subject became less sharp or even distorted. This is why a lot of YouTubers are recommending this lens for still photography. So I will show you some stills I took with this lens where my subject is centered and you can see the swirl I'm getting towards the outside. The other reason why someone might recommend this lens for stills is because of how difficult it is to access the focal ring when using the adapter. I was able to solve for this by making my own focus shifter out of wood, which I will feature in another video. I wanted to point out that I made a wooden focus pole shifter, um, which I find to be really helpful because, especially with this adapter, which is indented, it was very hard to uh, get my fingers around that focus pole. And it, it was just impossible to use without getting my fingers in the picture. And so uh, I just wanted to point that out that this is going to be a really difficult lens to use without some kind of focus shifter. So here's a shot I took with this lens that I ended up liking the most. The lens distortion may not always be all that important, which is why you might consider leaving it in for added character. But in a shot like this where we have many vertical lines, that distortion will become more noticeable as you can see here. To remove lens distortion in Premiere Pro CC, 
There are several ways of doing this, but what I did and what you can do is go to your effects menu and select Video Effects Distort Lens Distortion and adjust your curvature. The sweet spot I found for my lens was at negative 9. The one complaint I have with this lens is the slight hang up I get when focusing. Uh, honestly now though with, with the focus pull it's uh, running a lot uh, more smoothly but uh, if you hear that that is some clicking. And uh, I'm not very happy about that, that clicking. Uh, this is a brand new lens. Really shouldn't be doing that. And the, the issue is not like, you know, I don't use the internal audio on the camera, so it's not a huge issue for, um, you know, audio wise. But when it comes to uh, the stillness of the shot, every time I hit those bumps, you know, the camera shakes. And, uh, you know, if you want a still image or a smooth shot, that's going to interfere with that. And it could just be the iteration I purchased. I'm not claiming that all 25mm CCTV Pixacol lenses come this way. And that leads me into my next topic. That is natural lens variation. The natural variation you will see between iterations of the same lens. I could buy the same lens again and this goes for all lenses, but you may find that the same model lens will vary from iteration to iteration. Some may be sharper, some may have more distortion, some may focus more easily. So I bring this up because you might find that your lens is just not the same as mine or others that have been purchased. One thing that I do wish I had done differently was use a lens hood. As you can see here, in a lot of the shots I was taking with this lens, it seemed as though there was way too much light hitting the front element, giving me some flare and milky glow. Granted, I was shooting wide open on a sunny day, and sometimes it's hard to tell while shooting in RAW if you're overexposed, so it may be possible that my ISO or EV was set too high, but I think a lens hood would have helped me in some of my daylight shots. If you're interested in seeing more sample footage I took using this lens, please check out my Paul Reed Smith's Masterclass at Ish Guitars video. Overall, I am super happy with the sharpness and depth of field I was getting with this lens. The tiny click in the focus made it hard to do a smooth focus pull, but I am getting better. I can't tell you how much I love this lens though, even with its small flaws. If I were you, I would not second guess this purchase. At the time this video was made, the lens and adapter were listed at just $25.99, which is a great deal considering the quality of the picture you're getting and the adapter that comes with this lens. As I said before, I'll leave a direct link to Amazon in the video description below. I appreciate you guys using that link, it does help out the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment. Check out my other videos and subscribe.